Mosaics, an art form present at a civilization's zenith and present after its collapse. Strong in some ways, fragile in others. Used to portray gods. Reinforce patriotism. Honor the dead. And decorate bathrooms. It's ancient and oh so new. The first Western mosaics date from around 3300 BC and are found in Uruk, now in southern Iraq. Made from clay cones embedded in mud, they decorate the columns in a palace. The standard of ore, found south of Baghdad, is made out of shell, lapis lazuli, limestone, bitumen, is used as glue, it's on wood. It's 3000 BC, they figure. It's nine inches tall and 20 inches long. There's two panels. They portray peace and war. By 800 BC, colored pebbles were starting to be used as pavement. The Greeks raised this pebble technique to an art form, making precise geometric patterns and detailed scenes of people and animals. Rome adopted the Hellenistic art form and sent it throughout the Roman Empire. They used it to honor their heroes and portray the domestic scenes, as this one at the Roman villa Casale in central Sicily. Roman floors would frequently have a center design called an emblemata. This is a very complex piece of art, and it would have an outline of a frame around it. The comic musicians in Pompeii are an excellent example of this. A master artist would complete this piece, while apprentices would work on the geometric patterns and borders around the outside. Gladiators were another popular theme, here found in the Libyan town of Slyton. Pompeii and Herculaneum had their share of figurative mosaics, preserved for us thanks to the volcano Vesuvius. The famous floor found in the House of the Fawn in Pompeii is believed to be a mosaic copy of a Greek painting. The mosaic dates from the first century BC and it portrays a battle of Alexander and the Persian king Darius in 331 BC. Historians date that there were paintings made of this and that copies were circulated around the empire. This piece, they think, was moved from another place and put in Pompeii. Mosaics in the Bardo Museum of Tunis attest to the tradition in Northern Africa. Here, Virgil is inspired by the Muses as he is writing the Aeneid. This beautiful baptismal font portrays the divine work of salvation. A large mosaic shows Ulysses tied to the mast, resisting the song of the sirens. In March of 2015, 
the Bardo was attacked by two terrorists. They killed 20 people, mostly tourists, before being killed themselves. Black and white mosaics found in Ostia, the seaport for Rome, were made for a lively middle-class merchant population. The mosaics are extensive. They cover the plazas, the walkways, and the bathhouse floors. The Vatican holds many beloved works, such as this untidy floor. and these wonderful fish. Rome carried mosaics to their far-flung provinces, including this beautiful floor in London. And this sea god in the British Museum, another treasure from the Roman occupation. As Christianity replaced the Roman state religion, Mosaics were made for walls. The Byzantine churches in Italy, Sicily, and Turkey found that mosaics would decorate uneven surfaces in cramped spaces with dazzling efficiency. These mosaics often used gold and silver as well as glass. The metals were encased in a clear glass and set at random angles, so flickering candlelight would seem to glow. Sicily has four outstanding examples of Christ's Pentocrator, the true pinnacle of mosaic art. After the fall of Rome, the new Byzantine capital built the glorious Hagia Sophia. Kept mosaic floors in the Roman palace and decorated delicate Chora church with Christian images. Ravenna, Italy, the fifth century capital of the Western Roman Empire, has some of the finest Byzantine mosaics. The big three, San Vitale, San Apollinaire Nuovo, and the mausoleum of Gala Placidia are famous for their artistry. San Vitale, built in 546 AD, has a wonderful frieze of the Empress Theodora and her retinue, and Justinian the Emperor of the East. The tesserae is made in uniform size and square in shape. San Apollinaire Nuovo, built in 760 AD, boasts a procession of 20 virgins and the Magi on their way to the Holy Virgin. And then a procession on the other side of 26 martyrs led by Saint Martin to the throne of Christ. Jews during Roman and Byzantine periods included mosaics in their synagogues. One in Jericho, excavated in 1936, has images of the Ark of the Covenant, a menorah, a shofar, and a lolav. A Roman synagogue in Ein Gedi, also has a Byzantine-era mosaic floor. Islamic architecture used mosaic techniques to decorate religious buildings and palaces after the Muslim conquest of the eastern provinces of the Byzantine Empire. The Dome of the Rock, built in Jerusalem in 688, 
was decorated inside and out with glass mosaic. Rich floral motifs follow the Byzantine tradition. Non-religious mosaics decorated the palaces of the caliphs and other high-ranking officials. This is a Palestine bathhouse in Hisham's palace. In 965, Moorish Spain produced the central dome of the Great Mosque of Cordoba with its glittering niqab. Mosaics in the Islamic world gave way to tile and carved plaster as seen in the Alhambra of Granada. Medieval mosaic work continued in Venice's St. Mark's Cathedral. The Vatican in Rome. And the Baptistry in Florence. In the 16th century, a Roman mosaic school was established by the Vatican to complete the decoration of the newly built St. Peter's Basilica. Instead of painted frescoes in that great church, Pope Clement VIII wanted mosaics because they're brighter, they reflect more light, they last longer, and can be decorated with jewels to heighten the majesty. But in the Renaissance, artists seemed to turn from mosaics to painting. So it's going to take a 300-year jump from the Renaissance to the 19th century Art Nouveau movement before mosaic returned to prominence, transforming walls and floors with color. Catalan artist Antoni Gaudi used mosaics for air vents in his apartment building, Casa Mila, and medallions and spires for his now majestic Sagrada Familia, Park Well, near Gaudi's home, has a serpentine bench, a favorite stop for many Barcelona visitors. Paris boasts many a turn-of-the-century mosaic. The Grand and Petit Palais, built for the Exposition of 1903, are awash with fine examples of mosaic art. The Madeleine Church, just blocks from the Place de Concorde, predates them. It was the meeting place during the French Revolution. The tomb of chemist Louis Pasteur was modeled after the mausoleum of Gala Placidia in Ravenna. Pasteur's wife directed that all the animals benefiting from his work be portrayed around his crypt. Continuing the theme of 19th century mosaic as homage to an individual, the most famous example may be the Church of the Spilled Blood in St. Petersburg, Russia. A Russian Orthodox church was constructed after the assassination of Emperor Alexander II, whose carriage was bombed by separatists in 1881. The church was built on the spot of the attack. It contains over 80,000 square feet of mosaics depicting Christ, saints, and many figures from the Bible. Finely detailed Byzantine motifs decorate all of the interior and much of the exterior. Russia has mosaic treasures, but an amazing one can be found in the United States. 
St. Louis, Missouri is the home of a basilica with over 83,000 square feet of mosaics created using over 40 million pieces of glass. The St. Louis Basilica has less finely detailed scroll work between its images. Many of the images are featuring historic events in the state, and the text is written in English. The Basilica is open to the public, free to tour, and includes a mosaic museum on the lower floor. So the mosaic tradition handed down through history now has a new resurgence. New materials. New ideas. New creators. We get to watch, enjoy, and even participate.